Whew. Well, welcome to another edition of 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. Uh, unfortunately, this is not going to be uh, very upbeat, unfortunately, even though I had a really good week last week with uh, Grindhouse Resurrection. Um, last week marked the passing of quite a few icons here, uh, the week before that also. And it is only fitting that I address, you know, them because they were a big part of uh, grindhouse history, motion picture history, and television history. So, um, oh shit. I tell you, this, this is the worst part about doing this, but, you know, gotta keep it alive. Uh, Paul Servino passed away, I believe, two weeks ago. Uh, Paul was uh, in Goodfellows and a lot of other films, but Goodfellows would be the one he would be remembered uh, most likely for. Uh, another passing was David Warner, the British actor who uh, was in Morgan, uh, time after time as Jack the Ripper. And uh, two Peckinpah movies, oddly, um, The Ballad of Cable Hogue and uh, Cross of Iron. Um, this one uh, really affected a lot of people. Michelle Nichols passed away at age 89. Michelle was Lieutenant Hura on uh, TV Star Trek and was a groundbreaking actress in many aspects. Um, singer, dancer, uh, actress, um, many things. Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie to anybody saying I was a big Star Trek fan because I wasn't. I rarely watched the show. I did, however, enjoy the motion pictures. Um, there was a thing about me, and everybody always hits me with this, you, you weren't into like TV back then? Well, it wasn't like I wasn't into TV, I was just not around all the time. I'd go out and go to the movies. Um, I know Star Trek was, a, like I said, it was a groundbreaking motion picture. The first on-screen TV interracial kiss between Nicole and William Shatner. And, um, you know, funny thing was, I had picked up James Doohan at an airport because he was going to do the Chiller Convention and I was sort of like stranded with him for lack of better words for 45 minutes to an hour and he was a very nice man he was a war hero we chatted a bit and at no time did he bring up what was my favorite Star Trek episode which I was glad was because I really wouldn't have an answer for the guy you know another nice guy that uh, left us years ago um, it's just sad, you know, to see these people pass away, but Nicole was 89, and that was a good run. Uh, last uh, is Tony Dow. I believe he was 77 from Leave it to Beaver. Um, that was probably one of the most iconic TV shows ever made because it never really died out. I mean, the Beaver was in our consciousness for decades. Uh, you know, you got to go back to the 50s and 60s when, you know, TV was, you know, was in its infancy. And I guess, I think I had read this at one point, that um, the government wanted to repopulate the country after World War II. So they created these, you know, from the networks, these TV families like Leave it to Beaver, two kids, uh, my three sons, three kids, the Donna Reed show, two kids, father knows best, three kids, whatever. So it was, you know, usually the stoic dad with the pipe in his mouth and mom who stayed home and did housework all day and the kids got into mischief. Um, that, I think this was called the nuclear family, but when we hit the, the late 60s, it was sort of replaced by the Manson family because, you know, I was one of those kids, you know, basically that was going to be rebellious and, you know, rebel against everything, including the Vietnam War, because, you know, most of our parents back then, you know, had something to do with World War II or the Korean War, so they thought, you know, nothing to go in and join the army and serve your country or get killed in Vietnam, which I was really loath to do. I never dodged the draft, I just never was called up. But, you know, going back to this whole thing, um, Tony Dow and uh, Jerry Mathers were Wally and the Beaver, and... Um, Wally and the Beaver, you know, it never, it never got old. I mean, there was, you know, I think there was a couple other, you know, they were brought back for, you know, more Leave it the Beaver stuff. Uh, I think Barbara Billingsley was still alive then. Um, they were in the Kentucky Fried Movie in the jury scene, and they, they did the convention scene a lot. I think they were a chiller quite a few times, and uh, they were two of the coolest guys around. And, it, you know, it, it, 
it's sort of, you know, it's sad in a way because I guess you'd call me a boomer. But like a lot of guys my age are like sitting around now thinking, you know, we're seeing basically huge parts of our, what was used to be our lives, our past, just disappear, you know, into the ravages of time. Um, we see these, you know, actors that we, you know, held in such high esteem and they're, you know, we're losing them left and right. And it's, that's time. And I understand, you know, now, you know, a lot of older guys that I met growing up that were alone and sort of disenfranchised because what they had known was no more and, you know, their families had passed away and they were pretty much alone. And that, <laughs> hate to say it, that sort of sums up what I, where I am right now, you know, um, not to be morose or anything like that. Um, like I said, it's it, it just sad to see, you know, what was a huge part of your life growing up just, you know, not be there anymore. And um, I guess Jerry Mathers is the only one left. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's just very sad to think about this. But on an upbeat note, if there is one today, uh, congratulations to Nature Boy Ric Flair, who wrestled his last match Sunday night against uh, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Uh, his tag team partner was his son-in-law, Andre De Hayo. And uh, Rick won. Um, way to go out. That's what he wanted. And uh, congratulations to my old friend Jay Lethal because uh, Rick was one of his icons. He got to work with Rick. He got to train Rick. And he got to wrestle Rick in what is going to be what was going to be his last match. And a lot of uh, Rick's uh, former WWE running mates were present in the audience, like Mick Foley and The Undertaker. So, again, Rick, uh, congratulations on your last match, and now would you please take it the fuck easy? Um, yeah, so, another thing, too, before I go, um, Grindhouse Resurrection is selling good, but also, I have to put over my friend's stuff, um... Midnight Magazine, which you can pick up at Midnight, Midnight Magazine at uh, the big cart cartel store, along with um, Strange World, another little magazine they're putting out, which I'm going to be a part of shortly. And uh, if you don't want to buy it from me, you can buy it from them, the brand new premiere issue of Grindhouse Resurrection. So I thank all the fans that have you know picked this up so far. The response has been overwhelming. The first print run sold out. We're on the second print run. And we're already looking forward to issue two, so that's the good stuff. So, in closing, never forget the people that made your life more bearable, like the, the actors on these TV shows and things like that. Um, like I say, it's just sad to see, you know, so much of our past just disappear. But, honestly, it was a lot better time. We just didn't have, you know, the bullshit that we're dealing with today. But... Until next time, my friends, stay safe, never forget, and I'll catch you on the flip side.